Hello and welcome back to Station Ears. I'm Mick and today we're going to be taking a bit of an in-depth dive into this little thing here, the filtration systems. So uh, I've heard a lot of rumours about this thing, so today we're just going to science the shit out of it and find out what's true and what's a load of garbage. So let's get stuck into it shall we? Now as I say I've heard a lot of things about this, I've heard it's uh, I've heard it's if, if you you've got to switch it off because it'll use up your filters uh, regardless of what happens. You've always got to keep switching it off even if you're not using it. I've heard that you can leave it on because if you if there's no gas going into it, it won't use your filters. Uh, and I've also heard that the filters only work depending on gas that matches the filters. So some people say you got to switch it on all the time. Some people you got to say you can. It's got to switch it off all the time. And I've also heard that if you pull all the filters out of it, it becomes the fastest pump in the game. Well, up until we got the turbo pump, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, I've heard a lot about it, but I've seen very little evidence. So, as I say, we've set up an experimental rig and we'll find out what's true and what's a load of garbage. Right, so here's our setup for experiment one. We have sensors on each of the input, the output, and the waste. Our atmospheric system, of course. We have a stack of pipes there just to store it all. So we don't want a tank, because a tank and a pipe will be separate atmospheric objects. So we want to eliminate that difference and keep our experiment as pure as possible. This is the inlet side. It will be measuring. We want to be able to change the length of that. So I've just put a valve in there to allow us to change the length of this one there because that separates the storage there onto a separate system. So we essentially have two pipes on the inlet, a lot on the air waste and a lot on the output. Uh, but if these ones stay the same, it doesn't really matter because we're just checking the input that we're changing. So on our system here, we have a little code set up to check the number of moles of gas in the storage system and calculate the amount of changes each game cycle. So we've got it checking the input. Of course, the input one won't work at the moment because we've got a valve there. It's got a gas coming in from elsewhere. But if we switch it on, we can see that on our input, we have 5.39. On our waste, we have, or in our output, 5.39. The waste on is 3.2. The input, just don't worry about that one. That's nonsense at the moment. That's what it's doing at the moment with two lengths of input pipe. Now if we change them with my magic wand, that's 5.39 and 3.22. Change the length of it, it's now 8.85. 5.8. Once again, we've essentially doubled the length of the pipe. We've now doubled the speed at which it's happening. So it's 10.77 and 6.466. That's moles per game tick. So Changing the length of the input pipe will increase the speed. Increasing the length of the input pipe will increase the speed at which this thing operates. So it looks like it may have the same sort of janky uh, game calculations that it has on the uh, pressure regulators. So double the length of the pipe on the input, double the speed which the machine runs at. Okay, so we'll switch over now and uh, we'll change the output length. Okay, we're set for experiment two. I've moved the valve over to the output, so now we can change the length of that. This is now a closed system, closed off. This is now a closed system, I'm no longer recharging it. So this will now count changes of moles in here, and changes of moles in here. Once again, it'll be the input and the waste we're looking for. The output will just be a nonsense information now. So we switch it on as it is. We are getting a lot. 115, 40, that's a lot. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> that is happening very quickly, so we'd better do this quickly. So I've got 115 on the inlet. If we double, if we extend the length of the output pipe, it is still 115 coming in. Again, it is still running at the same speed. So the length of the output pipe has nothing to do with it. Righto, so input pipe, 
does change it. The output pipe does nothing. We'll now test the waste pipe and see if that does anything. Third experiment. We now have the output is isolated, the input is isolated. We have now put the valve into the output so we can change the length of that one now. So once again the waste the waste value will be pretty much nonsense because it's venting outwards. The other two are what we're interested in here. So I shall need to have pipes ready. We're ready to go. Now switch it on. Let's see, oh we're still going very fast. So 115 and 72. If I change the length of this, it's still 115 and 72. Okay, so changing the length of the waste pipe makes no difference. It is just the input. The longer the input pipe is, the faster this machine will go. Right, so well, it's, it's sort of got half of the weird mechanics of a pressure regulator. Okay, so let's now have a look at the pressure. Does the input pressure have any effect on the actual running of the machine as the... Um, as it did with the volume pumps. Once again we're testing pressure. We've got the pressure of the input pipe and we've got the number of moles that are coming out of it there. Now if pressure affects it, as the pressure goes down the number of moles should go down as well. So uh, well, that's a pretty easy one. So let's just switch it on and see how we go. So we see it's going down by 115 moles. As the pressure drops it's just staying at 115 and it is sucking that tank down very, very quickly. Uh, unlike the volume pump, so this is a quantity-based quantity pump, it is not a volume-based pump. It is bumping out a fixed number of moles regardless of the pressure in the in input pipes. That means while at high pressures, the volume pump may outpace this, at, at low pressures, this is going to go out to the volume pump by a long shot. It works on a similar mechanic to the pressure regulators. So I might have to line it up now beside a pressure regulator and see whether it's the pressure regulator that's going to win or this pump that's going to win under the same conditions. All right, so here we are. We've got an off-filtration system versus our pressure regulator. Now the pressure regulator is influenced by the length of the input and output pipes. So we'll see how we go if we can get it to work. But we have the filtration, the number of moles it's transferring, taking out of the input tank. Input tanks are charged up to 10 megapascals both, and the regulator and the amount of moles it's pulling out per game tick. Now neither of them are affected by pressure, so it doesn't matter if we don't start them both at the same time. If we flick them both on, speed is, we find the filtration system 35.3 versus 1.1 on the pressure regulator. 35, that's a long way behind. Uh, but as I say, we are affected by the length of that. So if we add a bit more to it, put them back on again, we're still a long way off. But if we extend it a long way, now all of a sudden the pressure regulator is going a lot faster. But that is a pretty ridiculous output pipe. Um, so we can say, is the filtration the fastest pump in the game? Well, technically no, but under most circumstances, yes. Uh, if you're looking for a, a pump which will just pump to a vacuum under high pressures, we'll pop it up against the volume pump and see what happens. So now I have switched the regulator for a volume pump. Once again, both tanks are charged up to 10 megapascals. It's a volume pump, not a regulator anymore. Let's switch it on. So now volume pump is uh, affected by pressure, so it probably start off faster. So we have 34.5 from that one and switch it on. We have 400, 300 and it quickly drops with pressure. So once again we say the 
pressure drops, we're below a megapascal now and the filtration is now faster. And if we look at which one sucks it to a vacuum the fastest, uh, well, this one's almost there, but the other one may actually catch up and overpass before we actually get there. Because this one will take less and less per game tick until we get to the end where this one's just going to keep pulling the same every single game tick and that last little bit would disappear just as quickly as the first little bit. Um, but that's it. So we can say that at high pressure the volume pump is faster than the filtration system but at low pressures filtration system so we're still going with the volume pump filtration system is catching up almost there almost there and pipped at the post sorry missed out and the volume pump is still going so in terms of want to suck something to a vacuum that is very good if you want to shift large quantities of high pressure gas this once again the volume pump or now the turbo volume pump that we've got them will be by far the quickest way of doing it so is it the fastest pump in the game sometimes depends on what you're trying to do what your situation is but um, yeah it is a very effective pump don't get me wrong on that one next up on our little test schedule here is we're talking about filtration usage the actual filter cartridges now we have set up three experiments here I've had them running for a little while so switch them all off now our first statement here was you must switch your filtration system off because it will use your filters every game tick regardless of what happens well I've had this one running at the same time as all the others I have a blocked input there is nothing there there has been no gas going through this at all and our filters are still at hundred percent so no that's not true if there's no gas going through your system there you can leave it on as long as you like and it will not use your filters second one I've got gas coming in from the atmosphere here so um, with our atmosphere there is no volatiles in the atmosphere so it's coming in just oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide and a bit of pollutant so there is no volatiles coming through so what we're filtering here is all going directly to the waste so are the filters being used if nothing is actually going to the output well once again it's been going for a while that's still at 100% that's still at 100% no your filters filtration systems are not used based on the input gas if everything goes to the waste nothing's going through so we must hopefully by some force of elimination here we think the filters must be used on that one here which is what we've got here once again just atmospheric gas in is 62 percent oxygen we have oxygen filters in it's been running the same time as the other ones there so if our theory holds that's 100 percent that one's at 92 so yes if gas is going to the output then your filters are being used but if there's no gas going to the output or no gas going in it at all your filter your filter cartridges will not be used at all right just what goes to the output so I guess we have a test now is it time based or is it quantity based so I'll have to set some up again to try and make it capture different amounts of gas in the same amount of time so here is our final experiment now we have two setups pretty much almost identical the only difference we've made is on this one we have doubled the we have put in an extra couple of lengths of pipe so we now have a double the length of the pipe on this one here so this one had eight lengths in it this one's got 16 lengths of pipe in it so we from our earlier tests we found if you double the length of the pipe you double the speed of the uh, filtration system so it's been running a while now we'll switch it off if we look at our tanks we have 22 megapascals in there and 10.1 in there so it has definitely run at twice the speed it has captured twice as much oxygen from the thing now has it used double the filter or not uh, that one's at 100 percent that one's at 91 percent this one here it is running at twice the speed this is at 100 percent that is also at 91 percent so the amount of gas collected does not affect the filter use 
it is the time it is spent collecting gas. So if you are only collecting a little dribble of gas or a huge amount of gas, it will use the same amount of filter regardless. So it is consumed per game tick when it is actually in use. But that's all well and good. So where does that actually leave us on a practical sense of things? Well, in terms of pumps, they're very effective. Uh, they're a bit bulky, but they're very effective. Um, in terms of uh, gas setups, there's a few things you've just got to keep an eye on. Depending on how you've got things set up, if you have something like this with your tanks and a parallel setup where all the pipes are connected, input to waste, and it just so cycles through. Now these ones are good for if your filters run out and you're not paying attention, you keep your gas. You keep your gas in the line until you replace the filters. Uh, the alternate setup is a serial connection where you come in from your source, goes into one, into the next, into the X, and anything you don't want is just thrown away. Now this is the fastest method of filtering all your gases, uh, but if your filters do run out, all of the gas that you want to keep will pump straight into the waste and you'll lose it all. Now a few tricks to look for. This one here, if you want them to run faster, the longer this pipe is, I don't have it connected to anything at the moment, let's pretend that's connected to your tanks and everything else, the longer this pipe is, the faster everything will operate. Now this one here, you really have to be careful because this one here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lengths of pipe on it. This one has seven lengths of pipe on it, so these two will run at the same speed. This one may have, oh, of course it's not hooked to anything in it, but if this goes all the way through your base to another one there, it could have a hundred lengths of pipe on it. So when you hook it up like this, um, this one will be operating a lot faster than these ones, which means that it could overpressurize this pipe because these ones just won't be able to keep up. The way to solve that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pipes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All we got to do is break the pipe there, and we can just put in a valve or something like that. Uh, oh, we've got the new, the new one-way, one-way valves like that, and we can continue your pipe onto where else, where else it came from. But as long as this length of pipe leading up to the first machine is the same as these lengths of pipes here, you don't have to worry about exploding the pipes. Oh, that's about it. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's the um, investigation of filtration systems. Um, I hope that has helped a bit, answered a few questions there. I know it's sort of been a bit of a learning experience for me. I've learned some new stuff. A um, few of the quirks there. Once again, double the length of your input pipe, double the speed of your, of your filtration system. So that's the big one there. And your filters are used per game tick if there is a matching gas in there. They're the main ones to take away. Let that be a guide in designing everything you do with your filtration systems. There may be other things there. That's all I can think of for today. But uh, if you've got any other discoveries there, let everyone know. It's all cool. Um, so, till next time, happy building. See ya.